are tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV, the destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to AfterBuzz TV's Parenthood After Show. We are so excited to be talking about Season 6, Episode 3, The Waiting Room. And boy, did we wait tonight. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a lovely full panel with me tonight. I'm your host, Marissa Serafini. And ladies, introduce yourselves. Hey, guys. I'm Lexi Hammersfar. Hey, y'all. I'm April Wissenhant. Hey, guys. I'm Kelly Knezovich. All right. I mean, what did we think of this episode? Very hard-hitting. Very hard-hitting. Yeah. It was so sad, in my opinion. I mm-hmm. I usually don't get like very teary eyed for shows in general, but I was tearing up. I texted my mom and I was like, "This is so sad." <laughs> <laughs> just so many parts of it tonight, with every character, just really like hit me as they, of course, always do. Like always. I said last week, but just I feel like there were no like super happy moments. This was just like a punch in the gut kind of episode tonight. Yeah, I really really got teary-eyed when Zeke, you know, when he when he had his big emotional moment. Mm-hmm. I think that's when, I think that's probably one of the biggest times that I've gotten super teary-eyed over the entire parenthood seasons over all of them. Oh, so far. I mean, we'll, we will definitely get into it, but let's start on a more lighter note. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joel and Julia and Chris Jeffries, now we have his first name. I mean, okay, so we start really with Julia and Chris at their office, and they're talking about, oh, oh, college stories. What do we think of this now that we know there's a lot more history between the two of them? It was a sweet moment. I didn't know, well, I guess none of us knew that they had all of that history. I didn't expect um, for that to come. I thought, you know, they met at work, and that's how they knew each other. Uh, It was definitely a sweet moment. It made me feel... A little more like oh but then you know I see Joel and it all comes back for him I really I really like them together after seeing this episode I'm super pro Julia and Chris yeah yeah cuz I had a kind of a similar situation with like a a friend from forever ago so Mm -hmm. yeah I like it and he's so good to her Right now. The Twizzlers? Right now. That is yeah. so yeah. Good point. Cute. Lexi, what do you think? <laughs> the only thing that sells me on Chris is the Twizzlers, because for anyone who knows me, <laughs> you can win me over with Twizzlers. But I, I together, in general, he just looks like a teenager. With, I don't know. His haircut just really bothered me at night, and I <laughs> just had a hard time moving past it. So... I'm, I'm, I'm still a big Get a new Joel. haircut. It's not yes, fix it. Looks. Yes, I was like, let's base this relationship off of his looks. I mean, his face is good, though. His face, his face is good. Aww, yes. I, I will give it to them. They do look cute together. I mean, I think most of us are for Team Joel and Julia. Yeah, whatever. But, you know, whatever. But, you know, I kind of do, in a way, they do have chemistry together. Mm-hmm, and they, they are do. cute. But the fact that he is actually, he hasn't given us a reason to not like him yet Mm -hmm. and there therefore there is that potential for having the good relationship and even they're talking about introducing him to zeke and then there was a particular line julia says like you know introducing all boyfriends Mm -hmm. she said the word boyfriend so do we think they have gotten to this level yet in defining the relationship The fact that she told Joel, definitely, because that's huge to tell the person that you're still married to that you're seeing someone else. So I think they're definitely there. He clearly is super into her, I feel Mm -hmm. like. Just, Mm -hmm. um, you know, little gestures like that, even though technically it was a big gesture, shows that, you know, he's feeling him some Julia. (laughs) But that was the (laughs) sweetest thing. I I mean, for him to have sent a survival kit with Twizzlers. 
But I thought that was just like, that's such... sexy. I mean, you can send <laughs> yeah. me sweets and I'd yeah. be like all over you. You can propose I... to me with Twizzlers. And yeah. I'd be like, yes. Absolutely. A lot of Twizzlers. I kind of want Twizzlers now. I know. Should have got next some. week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, may- maybe next uh, after show we we'll definitely pig out on Twizzlers. So yes. I loved how even Julia's telling Sarah about this man. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Julia's telling more people. I think we see her happy for once, and we haven't seen her happy in a very very long time. And so I think that's why I really like them together because she is just over the moon in love with this guy maybe no Get no there. no because <laughs> no 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 I don't think she's in love with mm. him yet but she did say the line I think he's in love with me mm-hmm. yeah true, so true. it's right I think she's now falling in love with the gestures I think she loves the fact that she's being loved I right. think she mm-hmm. loves the idea, idea of it, of it. Mm-hmm. yeah but Joel still loves her though Right. Oh, but it's like absolutely. a different kind of love. What do yeah? What do we think of that conversation they had on the phone? And Joel still being the supportive man mm-hmm. that he is, ex husband. They haven't really officially divorced no, yet. No, they're separated. Yeah. But he says he's still there in support for everything. Mm-hmm. Is this too confusing right now? I think he's been semi clear as far as how he feels because he kissed her. He says he wants to be there for her. You know, he's definitely making strides to say that he wants to be there for her again but she's just not having it because it was so hard for her to get over him so i think he's definitely sim- he's not saying i want to get back together but he's sending some signals to kind of put it out there i mean he went and visited zeke i feel yeah. like yeah. that was yeah. such a sweet yeah he did not have to do that i mean i feel like there's plenty of estranged husbands out there who would not go visit the um father-in-law in that situation i love how you bring that up because if you think about it we haven't seen any of joel's family Mm -hmm. we've only seen joel with the bravermans Mm -hmm. because the bravermans is his family that's Mm -hmm. all he he kind of referenced Mm -hmm. that too tonight he kind of says you know i love this family i love your father and yeah and and it is his family despite the fact that he might not be they're cutting that ties between his connection to the bravermans he's still a part of a braver he's still a braverman in my eyes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure he, I don't know where this relationship is going. It doesn't look too well right now. It doesn't look good at all. It's scaring me. Yeah. But at least <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> I, I really do like her and Chris. Okay. Mr. Jeffries. No, you it's, it's good to have different I'm opinions liking it. on the show. Sydney is going to freak oh, out. I know. I like oh, it. She's going to lose her mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she's not going to handle that well. No. She and Ruby should hang out. Ooh, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I was thinking that tonight Bad with idea. Ruby. I was like, I think I actually dislike Ruby more than I dislike Sydney at this Same. point. Yeah, for sure. Mm, goodness. You know what? Speaking of Ruby, let's just get into them. Let's yeah. do it. Sarah and Hank, you know, and Ruby being a very teenager. Yeah. <laughs> um, having, they're getting cabin fever worked up in that place that mm-hmm. uh, Hank works at. She wants to get out, wants to hang out with her father, but Hank's not really into that he's too busy working but sarah takes her to the pharmacy to the store that drug store Mm -hmm. to go shopping to go (laughs) the drug store woman you know girl time yeah girl time but what do we think of ruby being a little kleptomaniac poor ruby her resentment for sarah i think or maybe it's just another female in hank's life or a female in general, when she, the nail polish scene, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when she basically called Sarah old, Old. was so, yeah. That is so not true. It's so not true. I know, I I love her. Yeah. (laughs) It's a great color. I just thought that was really disrespectful of her, especially for someone that she's not that familiar with. But again, Mm -hmm. maybe it's just resentment of, you know, a new girl in Hank's life. I think it definitely is. Um, my parents are divorced, and I remember when my dad first started dating someone, I was like, oh, heck no. Even as, like, a young child at the same time. Obviously, Ruby's taking it in a different way and stealing stuff as a sign of, or she's just kind of, you know, showing out. And I, I definitely think it's, you know, a cry for attention, but at the same time, it's she needs to get, like, a kick in the pants and straighten up at this point. She needs better discipline. Yeah. yeah. And we even see it from her mother. I'm currently forgetting her name right now. But she's yelling... I feel like it's Betsy Sandy. Yes, yes, I think yeah. it's Sandra, Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, I think it's Sandy. Yeah. But uh, we see her yelling at Hank B. Like, why was she hanging with Sarah? Which is actually a really good point. Mm-hmm. I think she was spot on in this conversation. I don't think that she should have said, I don't want Sarah around my daughter. Right. I was... Nope, anti. Did not like hearing that at all. No. I think it's so, I mean, it's obviously just up to her. She, I get it in the sense of she is just moving back from 
I forget where they moved to, Colorado, wherever they, they it was. They went to Minnesota. Okay, to yeah, Minnesota. Um, this is a person who she doesn't know at all. So, you know, as a mother, you would, I feel like you would kind of want to get to know the person that your child was hanging out with when she's in such like a turmoil state. Um, but at the same time, it's definitely for sure a little harsh being like, absolutely not. She cannot be around. I get maybe like them two by themselves, but if Hank's there, I mean, why not? Lexi, are you for or against Sarah still being in the relationship or still being there? I think that there's a dynamic with her and Ruby is very interesting, but I could definitely see how if Ruby's already going through such a complicated time and she's already very messed up clearly, then it might not help to have another woman enter the situation who's kind of being seen as a mother figure but not really but you know Mm -hmm. still the same concept i don't know if i necessarily see sarah taking on the motherly role i feel like she might just want to kind of help out hank or or maybe just hang out with ruby just so ruby stops complaining and hating life but i don't think she's trying to comfort her and be a mother and and take her under her maybe not just the mother role but just someone to talk to yeah because Mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to talk to someone you don't know and spill out and vent all your problems Mm -hmm. and have someone just like take it and not really you know i mean she she's in a relationship with hank and she's going to relay that information but sometimes someone just needs like a young person like Ruby needs an adult just to talk to that you don't have that connection with. Mm-hmm. Therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Free it's therapeutic. Therapy. Yeah. I mean, and might as well be Sarah. She's experienced. She knows what it's like being that single parent. I think Sarah would be a great person to talk to. I think so too. And I don't think that she, it would be a thing where she would tell Hank. I mean, maybe she would because they're dating, but I feel like, you know, it's one of those things that Ruby could actually trust her to say, you know, this sucks i'm going through this and it's terrible and you know she could be a good shoulder to lean on yeah maybe we'll see that side of her like girl code exactly yeah (laughs) sometimes you need another woman who's not your mother Mm -hmm. that you know in your life yeah very true i think so so all right anything else about them other than ruby's still a teenager hopefully you know things will start clearing up yeah Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine what that conversation is going to go down with Hank and Sarah finding out that they don't want Sarah around. It, it see, well, in the preview, it seems to not be going very well. <laughs> I yeah, I would think it would put a huge wrench in the relationship because yeah. if Ruby's moved back, she's going to be around Hank a lot, which means that they're not Sarah and Hank are going to be able to see each other. But mm-hmm. does Hank want her to be around? Want Sarah to be yeah. around? Want, sorry, want it- Ruby to be around. Yeah, I don't sure. think he really has yeah. a choice at this point. Though. Okay, so as a father, kind of and he feels responsible. Okay, well, but, but I think he feels responsibility because, because they moved back. Yeah, and okay. but he was so upset whenever they moved too. Like he definitely wanted to be a part of her life. So I think yeah, he was he gonna wants move her to, to Minnesota, but then he moved yeah. back. Yeah, so it shows that he does want to be that supportive father, and he did say to Sandy that he is trying. Yeah, right, he's right. not the best father, but he he's is trying. trying to be the father right. figure that Ruby definitely needs right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Amber. Amber and her pregnancy. She She's still trying to figure out how to tell Ryan. Mm-hmm. And she goes to tell um, Drew. Drew still didn't know about it. And they decide to go on a road trip to Wyoming. All the way from Berkeley. That's a long road trip. 18 For hours? For a moment? I yeah. like it's longer than 18 hours. It's, it's I have, more I don't than a thousand miles. Yeah. I, mm. That's not... <laughs> That's, that's a, a, that's that's a good brother. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, okay. What what do we think of this whole situation with Ryan and how when they even got there to tell him all the news? I think that Amber made a good call at the end. I mean, I've yeah. I've personally been in not a pill situation before, but one of those ones where it's like you can't change the person. You mm-hmm. need to step back and remove yourself. And so I totally sympathized and understood with her or understood her in the sense that she was like, I, I need to focus on myself. Like, I can't be trying to fix you and dealing with your issues at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I under, I sympathized. I think it um it's showing us a way more mature side of Amber that I've wanted to see for yeah. a long time because 
you see, obviously, whenever she's talking to Drew after she tells Ryan, you know, he's he's excited about it. I'm going to stay here with him. And so you see her kind of going through that. But then after talking to her brother, she made it, made the decision that she needs to make. And I don't think we would have seen that from Amber even last season, maybe. Um, so it proves she's definitely growing, right. not just belly-wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm done. I know. No, no, no. no. Um, I thought... It was a little strange, her um, her reasoning for going. She said she wanted to tell Ryan. That in person. That I in mean, person. I, I get that. I get yeah. that as well. But she also wanted to tell him, I'm raising the baby on my own. You don't need to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I would even tell my, are they ex fiance or ex yeah. fiance? Yeah, fiance. They never got married. I, I, would, I don't even know if I'd tell him if, if I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm pregnant with your baby. You're not going to be a part of it. I, I don't, oh, that's man. so weird for me. That's that's hard to really, you know, say wh- what's what because I feel like if I had in that situation uh, an ex-fiance, they were going to get married, and I think he had the right to know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and also, I think that if you're in that situation and you are going to tell him, she going into it, she wasn't expecting money from him. And I think that she felt like she needed to reinforce that and emphasize that to him, maybe in person, so that he really gets that she is gen- coming from a place of genuine, you know. Yeah. And it is, I felt so bad for Ryan in this situation because they get there and his place is, no offense, a dump. Mm-hmm. He's he's a complete mess and watching Monsters Trucks. I mean, not, no judgment there. But, <laughs> but like, pills and, and the whole place is a mess. He's literally not taking care of himself. And he's even on Tramadol, mm-hmm. the, the, the medicine. I don't know if you caught that, but that's actually a narcolytic. Um, narcotic-like pain reliever. Mm. So, And we also find out that he's still heavily using mm-hmm, it, and mm-hmm. they're trying to wean him off, but he's still very medicated right now. It I, definitely scares me for for them, because I think that, you know, just like you said, he's like, I'm really going to try. I didn't know up until this point, but I feel like that's like the number one rule, even mm-hmm. if it's a child you still don't change for them you ultimately have to change, change for yourself, yourself. Yeah. otherwise mm-hmm. it's it's just going to come back so i hope that you know there are things that can encourage you to change for yourself but i hope that he really does do it because he wants to do it because he wants to be healthy um but it scares me for that whole situation because i'm just like does that mean he stays in wyoming can he move i, I don't know we'll see and i think that might have been the deciding factor for amber on her needing to do this on her own for now because he is just trying to get off the medicine for the baby. Had mm-hmm. he not known that she was pregnant, then he may maybe he would stay on the pills. Mm-hmm. You don't know. You're totally right. It needs to be for himself and mm-hmm. not for someone else that he's doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did we think of Drew in this whole situation? Really telling Amber it is like like it is. I mean, humongous character growth, and I would not expect this from Drew like not at two all. seasons ago. And the fact that. You know, the, the whole Drew-Amber relationship, it's amazing. You can really mm-hmm. tell, they can just tell e- anything to each other. And the fact that, you know, the coming to the realization that no matter how much you want to ch- change him and, like, help him out, he's not going to change. He mm-hmm. hasn't changed now. Uh, what do we think of how that all went down? I'm proud of Drew, just like you said. I You know, I wouldn't have expected it. He's definitely the um, more of the quiet you know sit in the corner type of character he is i completely (laughs) agree he makes statements um and kind of really profound statements at the right time when he really needs to Mm -hmm. he's quiet otherwise but he says what's important and i'm happy that he you know stood up to her and said absolutely not you're not leaving you're you know i'm not leaving you in wyoming do what you need to do and i'll come back for you good Good. move true I was really proud of Amber for not getting super defensive mm-hmm. with that conversation because I was, I for sure thought she was going to be like, you know what, Drew, leave. I'm staying here. Mm-hmm. You do what you want to do. I'm going to do me and I'm going to stay with Ryan. But she listened mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she yeah. took really what he said. She she took it to heart. I thought that was so great. I didn't yeah. expect it at all. It resonated with her and I mm-hmm. thought that was a very good thing. But also, 
that was exactly what a brother should do in that situation. Mm-hmm. You don't leave your sister halfway yeah. across the country. I thought that was so great that he... Yeah. Well, in fairness, there are only three states over. But, yes, True. no, I get well, that. Okay, but, yeah. <laughs> <It's miles away. laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. That, I, I, again, it goes back to the whole brother-sister relationship that they really can just rely on each other in that way and call each other out. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. I loved it. Drew, with his dad, obviously we've seen the issues that he's had with him before. So I think that even maybe a little more so than Amber, he really remembers, you know, now anyway, what it was like once his dad came back and then left and everything. And so I think that, you know, hindsight's 20-20, it's kind of a good thing that he went through that now because it taught him a lesson and what, you know, is right and wrong. And maybe um, it's tougher for Amber to see that, but he can share his wisdom with her. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Because I love how the, when the father came back, um, you know, it was like Drew was the one who wanted to bond with her father, and Amber mm-hmm. was the resi- mm-hmm. resilient one. And now it's really full circle, and having that realization, wisdom. You know, you learn from your past. Oh, God, I love it. I love this show. Me too. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we move on? No, nope. no, nope. love them. Well, I just want to take a quick break to tell everyone thank you so much for commenting on YouTube and iTunes. Please keep rating and downloading. This is the final season. I can't oh. believe it. But we we would love to hear your comments and what you think about the amazing Bravermans. We love talking about them. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about them for the rest of the season. So just keep rating, keep commenting, keep downloading. Tell a friend and watch all of our other. 80 plus after shows we do here a week we do a lot so not just the braver men's but all the other shows too Mm -hmm. definitely check those out all right this surgery zeke's surgery the day has come oh my goodness the very first scene i mean we opened up with the kids coming back to the house and mm-hmm. just like wishing him good luck and it got really serious i'm like oh no i wrote in my notes sad oh no <laughs> <laughs> I see Set, the sad setting up the episode and setting the tone this was going to be a very mm-hmm. serious emotional mm-hmm. episode mm-hmm. what did we think so much, <laughs> so much. Um, so much. I, I may have said this last week but one of my favorite things about this show is that, you know, even though most of them are married, they all have a family outside of their family, I really like that they all come back, you know, the brothers and sisters, the mom and dad, for those type of moments. I feel like those are really big moments where, you know, you kind of just need the, the people that you grew up with, but they do that. And they don't, um, obviously the other people are very important as well, but it's something that I think uh, I, I appreciate because I just feel like it makes it more you know, just that Braverman clan. Uh, Julia, whenever she hugged him at first, I mean, just immediately, it's like, come on, what are you doing to us? Yeah. The thing that I love so much about this episode was that I feel like it was so focused on the immediate Braverman family and Mm -hmm. not the kids so much. I mean, Amber, of course, but not the other kids and not the spouses, Mm -hmm. except Joel. And so I I loved seeing that because you really saw like the tight-knit family Mm -hmm. that the Bravermans are. And I thought that was such a great thing to see mm-hmm. yeah and then when uh when zeke spilled the news to everyone that amber <laughs> yeah. 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 the one light moment of the episode <laughs> yeah. yeah and she was like well now nah, i got that over with because she was nervous about telling everyone mm-hmm. and so she's like you know thanks for doing it for me mm-hmm. and the sonogram i thought that was really sweet too. that was yeah. great uh, i love the line one clean sweep yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 and i put awesome <laughs> that's that great awesome. um but now everyone knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, the secret's not so much a secret uh, anymore. But I love the scene when they were on the porch. Oh yeah. Oh my they goodness. They were having Zeke. some really good scenes. I was just too. thinking that they're yeah, killing it this like season it. together. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know what to say, but it was like <laughs> I, w- I was already like tearing up in the first six minutes. Mm-hmm. Six minute mark of this episode. <laughs> not that I stopped it to make sure, but it shows that like. Even Zeke saying, I'm going to be there to hold your baby yeah. shows that, like, he, of course, he doesn't want to pass away and whatnot. Mm-hmm. He wants to be there for the family. And I think that was a foreshadowing of things to come in the future. Mm-hmm. So, kind of, I mean, we'll get into predictions. But that, I think there's some hope for Zeke now. Yeah. And we, he goes through the surgery, not to jump too, too far ahead, but we'll definitely get more into it. But at, we know he comes out well in the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Get this man an Emmy right now. I know. Give, yeah. like, anybody an Emmy exactly. on this show. For real. <laughs> they all deserve it. Yeah. He just, the way that he even, 
I mean, he got even better later, but the, his emotion talking oh. to Amber, I oh. mean, come on. Oh, man. my so God. Good. It's just... It's, so real. It is. Yeah. And his emotion yeah, talking yeah. to Melly right before he went into surgery, okay. I oh. thought that was Okay, amazing. can we talk about that for one what? second? <laughs> Longer than a second. Yeah. That was unbelievable. It was. It was mm-hmm. It was so genuine, yeah. the way that they interacted with each other. I mean, I literally, that entire time, I just sat there thinking, like, this could have been my grandma and grandpa mm-hmm. yeah. talking. Yep. And when he gave her that ring and she that put it on. Ring. That oh it's my goodness. Goodness. That ring. It's symbolic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's their marriage. Yeah. And even when Millie was talking to Julia, be like, this may be this, the day in sickness and in health. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, she's even con- oh, she even knows that this might be the end if he passes away. How terrible is that? Marriage might would be over. Ugh. And but of course, taking literally taking the ring off. That's mm-hmm. you know sign that it's over. But then physically putting back on shows that it's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not. A great way to end the episode. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm glad that they did end that on a more positive note mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and even though he was intubated and whatnot and he came out clean there was no complications that mm-hmm. was just her sitting there millie sitting there just like yes yeah they're so and great he opens his eyes how mm-hmm. dramatic i love it i know <laughs> so i love it i really do but um they played that so well though the um or just the camera work was so great i thought whenever all the kids were walking up to the waiting room because I thought it was another thing that was really symbolic because how they were talking about earlier, he's strong. You make us, or, you know, you make us all strong. It's to see the person in your family that is the strongest and is that rock to be so like in a weakened mm-hmm. state. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, the you know, I was looking at all of their faces as they were going in and it was just, oh. It like tears me to bits even thinking about it because the you know the tube and everything I don't know it's I, scary but I'm glad he's okay yeah, yeah it got very real but speaking of tearing to bits what would have happened I mean the, the, you'd be see the whole Bravermans waiting in the waiting room and they're just like contemplating everything that's going on not, not knowing what's gonna happen and but I love how they still like coincide with all these stories that are going on simultaneously with the you know. Um, Adam and Crosby storyline with Ash Ashes of Rome. Oliver Rome is having another fit. And Drama queen. Shocker. Yeah. And yeah. I mean but and then we see Crosby like trying to take care of that and he rides crazy on his motorcycle and crashes. I mean, I'm glad that they didn't, you know, do anything with him. Right. But I think they needed the situation to, like, really get Crosby in the mindset, like, anything could happen. I could have just died. Mm -hmm. And because we see him in the waiting room watching baseball. He's not really taking it seriously. And he needed a serious moment to, like, get into the mentality and the you know, take it all in. Mm. I kind of honestly thought that the baseball game was symbolic to Crosby for whether or not his dad was going to come out of surgery. I did, too. And so I think he was kind of, when he went on the motorcycle, I took it as he was blowing off steam and just trying to, like, get through it, and that's how he was getting through it, because he was tearing up yeah. on the motorcycle, yeah. and I thought that was, oh, how that's how he's coping. I don't know if y'all saw me during that scene, but I was literally just sitting there like this, <laughs> because, I mean, have you ever seen a continued motorcycle ride or a car uh, car drive where they're not staring at each other like this that doesn't mm. end in an accident. So yeah. I'm just like sitting there waiting. And then, of course, it happens. It just crashes. Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, he's lucky nothing really terribly happened mm-hmm. to right. him. And he was able to, you know, walk back with mm. the limp. He's fine. Yeah. And so is Zeke. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Anything else? There's so much. <laughs> I really, show, about so much. Crosby, I really liked how... Uh, I really liked his character in this episode, actually. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's always fun in games, and he really, um, he just, he he was a little bit stronger than I think we've ever seen him, and that was really cool. You know, he took care of business, and then, like you said, he let off steam, and um, I, I really like that side of him. It's cool. All right, I just got to say, you should give an Emmy to... Uh, any of them. Yeah, yeah. any <laughs> of, them. of them. But Millie, oh my goodness, oh, when yeah. he was... Yeah. When she, Zeke was literally going into the operating room and she was just standing there, literally crying. Mm -hmm. I mean, the camera was on her for a good 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And in film, that's a really long time. Mm -hmm. That felt so real and Mm -hmm. so emotional. Mm -hmm. Like, and she's by herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I think she had. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I think she had to be super strong for Zeke because I think that he's the. 
he's the guy. He's mm-hmm. the strong man. And then when he broke down and, you know, he grabbed her hand and said, I'm scared, Millie. I think she was still, I have to be strong for him. I have to be strong for my husband. Everything's going to be okay. And then as soon as he went away, she turned the corner and lost it. And I think it was almost like she let herself cry for like five seconds. And then she was trying to rein herself back in for the Mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she never really cried with the kids. Right. Yeah. And we haven't seen a performance like this from Bonnie Bedelia for her Mm -hmm. character. to just like, it felt so real and raw. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Every single second of it. Oh, it's yeah. Just I'm pretty sure I was so. holding my breath the entire time that, <laughs> that it, the camera was on her. Just because I was waiting for her to, to do that. Like, okay, got mm-hmm. it together. But you just haven't... It just shows the love between the two of them, like you were saying earlier. It's just so... It honestly it just feels like it's a real relationship, which is every show's you know, goal. point. Yeah. It mm-hmm. is to make you feel like they are actual real characters. And um and that's what it feels like. And so I'm I'm on the Emmy train too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got they gotta get it. Everyone. I <laughs> mean and then I loved how this family when they're talking to each other, they're not afraid to let each other know how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of families nowadays have that hard time with communication. Definitely mm-hmm. not with the brave women. So they'll mm-hmm. always let you know if there's something wrong with them. And the fact that they're not afraid to admit that they're scared. Mm-hmm. I mean, we even see Amber talking to Zeke, afraid to, and scared to tell Ryan about the pregnancy. And then we see even Zeke, a grown man going into surgery, telling Millie he's scared. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think you know how I'm feeling. <laughs> Anything else? This was such a hard, emotionally hitting episode, but I'm glad they had, that they ended it on a positive note. Mm-hmm. Zeke is good. Zeke is good. Zeke is good. <laughs> we'll end dot, it. dot, dot. We'll yeah. end Zeke's good. that there. All yes. right. Let's go to some news and gossip. Yeah. After Buzz TV News. All right. I believe you have news. It's not so much news as I. this guy on TV.com, he wrote this article about basically it's bold predictions and then measured predictions. But they're pretty funny because the bold predictions are really aggressive and obnoxious. Ooh, cool. <laughs> okay. And so I highlighted a few because I thought that they were kind of funny. Um, for Amber and Ryan, he basically said that he predict the bold prediction is he predicts that Ryan is going to die in a broken bottle fight outside outside Baby's <laughs> RS, which begins as an argument over the last package of diapers, and the baby will be the most promising baby of their own. Okay. Interesting. And then she he talks about how um, Joel goes to Baby's RS, and that's the bold prediction for Joel is that Joel's the one who like beats up Ryan because he's fighting for. A ba- like a diaper thing also. And then um, he says the measured prediction for Zeke is that Zeke has the operation, but it doesn't go totally smoothly. He might have a close call or several, um, and they'll either rejoice in his life or memorial- re- memorialize him in such a way that parenthood viewers will cure all the world's droughts with their tears. <laughs> oh, so I think very I specific. I yeah. love yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty funny article. Again, it's on TV.com if you want to look it up. But they go through every single couple and tackle it all. So. Wow. That's fun. Okay. Well, I, I do have some photos, but we will show them later when JTE queues them up. Um, but a couple fun articles. Uh, Glamour.com had a nice, fun girl talk kind of interview with Mae Whitman revealing her thoughts on love and George Clooney and, you know, Parenthood's final last season. But she, uh, there was a lot of things that she said about Parenthood. She said uh, for the audition process, she actually um, became close with Sarah Ramos at the beginning of Mm. auditioning because Sarah had already gotten the part of Hattie, of course, and she was waiting to do the audition and they met. And then they said, hey, whatever happens if you don't get the role or whatever, we should still hang out. And when um, uh, Mae Whitman was casted, she was the first person, Sarah Ramos was the first person she texted and and told. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Before yeah. her family. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so it just goes to show that like relationships have already started. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And she said that Sarah Ramos is one of her closest friends oh, in her wow. life. I thought that was really oh, cute. Really cool. yeah. And then she said, you know, just the difference between uh, how 
Amber has grown up in the last six seasons and all the different hairstyles and appearances, yeah. mm-hmm. that that actually wasn't the show's idea. That was May's personality. Oh, that's oh. cool. And, like, no one told her to stop changing or, like, you know, you have to look a certain way. That's just May. Yeah, it fits. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely fit Very with, fitting. like, her character growth because now she's looking a bit more mature and right. definitely in the 20s being a mother gonna have a baby and then you know she said you know her amazing career because she's young she's only 26 may whitman and but she's had an asta- outstanding film career she's oh, yeah. worked with um sandra bullock and george clooney and she she said one of her favorite memories was uh, working on the film one fine day with george clooney and mm-hmm. michelle pfeiffer but she was a kid in that and she said because the title's called one fine day she actually lost her two front teeth um, while filming that because she, she was a kid but they had to give her fake teeth um, throughout the whole shoot because literally the storyline <laughs> oh takes place in one day so to keep the consistency oh, oh my no. god oh, that's that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah and then uh, you know just just really really fun interview that you can check that one on at glamour.com and then a fun one with Dax Shepard he, he has a new upcoming fifth film called The Judge with Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall and he says he's been a big fan of both of those actors, uh, you know, his whole life. And he says it's surreal because he's working with two amazing actors and he's actually, you know, just there being in the same film. He can't really wrap his head around it. And um, and then uh, another fun news-breaking thing today, I just found out Jason Ritter will be back in Parenthood. I'm so what excited. Is Mark Sears coming back again? Mr. Sears. I like it. I mean, I think it's fitting. It is the final season, and we did hear from Jason Kadams that a lot of returning faces are coming back, mm-hmm. Jason Ritter being one of them. Of course, Mark Sears is going to come back in, into the picture. I'm surprised what, I, I mean, I'm wondering what they're going to do with him. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. Hopefully there'll be some closure, mm-hmm. like proper closure, because the last time I saw him, he said that there's... He's being engaged, yeah. mm-hmm. and he's going to get married. But maybe oh, we'll yeah. get proper closure in this final final moments with him. Maybe. Who maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Or, maybe something yeah. will yes. Or just add more drama to the show. <laughs> hey, it's the final mm-hmm. season. Go big or go home. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> I want to do quick shout-outs to thank you, everyone on YouTube, who's been commenting, especially to BS March 18. He said... Uh, from last episode, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about Sydney not being disciplined by a family. She said, Sydney's never been properly disciplined. I agree, my, and I personally agree. My parents would punish me, too, if I ever had that type mm-hmm. of Heck attitude yeah. towards <laughs> them. Thank you to Kate Latte or Lati. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, <laughs> great comments, and she just really, it was a really in-depth uh, comment from her. And she just talked about Joel and Julia, and Sydney's behavior is reflecting Julia's behavior. Because mm-hmm. Julia's very aggressive sometimes and very accusatory when she's fighting with Joel and then also thank you Joseph Boza who always comments both parents need to be there for Sydney to parenting again and then thank you to Isabel Felix she's the one who gave us the news about everything I mean you should definitely call in it seems like there's so much that happens in parenthood throughout the week and Mm -hmm. like if you have any fun news that we don't know let us know. Keep commenting below. Or tweet us. Yes, yeah. or tweet us. We, we love talking about parenthood. And then also, um, we have some fun photos from the cast of Parenthood. If you see this first photo, it is Mae Whitman with the Ella and... I'm, I'm completely... Mia. Ella Mia. and Mia. Ella and Mia yeah. Allen, the twin girls who play the, um, the daughter of Adam and Chris. Julia. Mm-hmm. Adam and Christine. Yeah, Christina. Christina. Yeah. Christina. Yeah. Oh, Julio, goodness. Adam and Christina. Um, and she said, uh, the text is really... They're all wearing matching frozen She said, frozen you know there's a special bond when matching frozen watches are involved. I love it. <laughs> I love They're it. They're so cute. At I am Kristen Bell, of course, who's Dash Shepard's wife and the voice of Anna and Frozen. And when then, did they get so big? They're so cute. They are. I love them. All right, and then the next photo... We have Sam Yeager oh, on Twitter. He he posted <laughs> April. He says, it? spoiler alert, Miles D. Heiser is handsome. <laughs> Can we talk about I feel like yeah. every scene this episode, he got more and more handsome. Oh, I think yeah. so. He's definitely oh, growing up. I was like, oh, sure. Definitely growing up. <laughs> you want my number? <laughs> <laughs> and then Miles D. Heiser even added to that. Spoiler alert, Sam Yeager has a camera phone. <laughs> Just a I nice rebuttal there. And then the last photo. 
we have. Oh, this was posted today by Monica Potter. Being it is Thursday, she hashtag TBT, throwback Thursday. It's a photo of her probably in like early 80s, late 70s with a sick looking mullet. That is a mullet if I've ever seen one. Oh my goodness. I had to post. It's so funny. That is amazing. She looks the same though. She does. In the face. face? Yeah. 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 Definitely in the face. So this was posted today by Monica herself. That's amazing. So she's posting it so can we. Yes. (laughs) Um, Fun photos from the cast. I love following them on Twitter. Definitely go check them out. Mm -hmm. And that's that's it for my news. So let's get into predictions, if we can. Spooky music. There we go. Jesus I'm trying. Yes. Now, you're after Buzz there we TV. go. All right, Lexi, we'll start with you. What do you think is going to happen? I think that in terms of Joel and Julia telling the kids, I'm a little more concerned for Victor than I am for Sydney because... Ooh. He was adopted. You always want a stable family in an Mm -hmm. adoption situation, and now it's not stable. So I feel like we might see him not go down a dark path, but I think he'll react a little more strongly than Sydney, who I think is just going to throw a fit in a tantrum. I think that's correct. Very good. (laughs) For sure. Very good. (laughs) Yes. Um, Okay, so first let me preface this with I have some, like, crazy predictions, but I don't... This is just me kind of like, oh, this could happen. But... I'm so excited. (laughs) Okay, so I have two. My first is that, you know, going back to the someone could die thing, I'm like, what if... Okay, so Crosby had this crash today. He didn't get checked out, probably isn't going to get checked out because he's Crosby and he's fine in his knee. What if he has some internal bleeding and he doesn't know? Oh, goodness. And what if, because I was thinking about it, Crosby is... Like, ev- I mean, you've seen, like, him and Julia have these huge moments. Him and um, Adam have these huge moments. I mean, they work together every day. Same with him and Sarah. He's the sibling who ev- not only does everyone go to Adam, but everyone goes to him as well. So, I mean, that would be, and his parents, you know, he's the favorite. I mean, he would be, it would be huge for something to happen to him. I know it's far-fetched, but it popped into my mind whenever it happened. Obviously, I would be very depressed if that happened, but <laughs> it's possible. And the other is, now that we know that Jason Ritter is coming back, I d- I'm getting the feeling that Hank and Sandy, I hope that's her name, they are going, I, I feel some chemistry between them still. And I feel like something could maybe come up between them. And so Mr. Sear coming back could have something to do with Sarah. Maybe there's turmoil with Hank. Maybe she gets back with Mr. Sear. That's I don't what know. I'm thinking. I don't like that. Okay. Yeah. Those Very are my crazy fun. predictions. Very <laughs> fun. All right. <laughs> So I feel like Ryan is gonna clean up, and I think that uh, I think that they're gonna be a family. I think he's gonna move back to California and be with her. Don't know where they're gonna live, but I think they're gonna start a family. I'm kind of th- I'm still with you on the whole. Who's gonna die? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> did we talk? About who's gonna die? Who? I think maybe the kid. Maybe it might be like a miscarriage or. Maybe because oh, the, the baby, the baby, okay. because um, okay. Zeke, you know, was like, I, I want to hold my grandson or, or my grandchild. Mm. Maybe he won't get that opportunity, not because he's going to die, but maybe the baby won't make it all the way. Mm. Interesting. Dun, all dun, right. Dun. So, so many speculations <laughs> about death. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, death. yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. I still, we know that Zeke's surgery went well. Mm-hmm. There weren't any complications yet. Right. Not during the procedure. It all went fine. But they did say the line, it all depends on how well he reacts and mm-hmm. how he takes the, the, heart the heart valve. So, And we know that there are a lot of complications post-operation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm still thinking Zeke might die. Uh-oh. I mean, I hate to say it, but I there was the moment where I think, I believe in the previews when he's talking to Julia and they're just bonding on the couch there. There's like a look in his eyes that he kind of knows something's knows some, up. Yeah. yeah. Knows something's up. I mean, and it's not like I just don't want my predictions to come right, you know, <laughs> but I, I think something's so I might wonder, happen I think to so him. Too. Does, if he does know something and he maybe just doesn't want to tell anyone, whether it's Millie or the kids, and maybe that's why he's taking all those precious moments to heart and really capturing those moments 
um, but doesn't say anything. Yeah, maybe. he knows his days are limited, and yeah. he's just enjoying every single. Moment. I will say this, and he's art- not the kind of guy who would tell someone if something's up with him. Right. Yeah. I will say the art. This article, the bold prediction for Zeke, is exactly your prediction mm. from last week with the yes. spreading it over the baseball field, the whole nine yards. Oh, yes, gosh. I kind of want it's that. Like, to- I want that to happen just so I can be right. <laughs> I mean, come on. I gotta we'll give get you something. Oh. Award. Yes. Yeah. Yes, oh I, I'd be gosh. fine with that. Okay. <laughs> but also, other people are speculating maybe maybe Zeke might not be the one who dies. Maybe Camille. Oh. 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 Goodness. All right. I oh, just, on, <laughs> okay. So that could be something because no. you know how Adam said he's like, Mom doesn't look too good, which obviously she's depressed. I feel like they say these little things it's all the time to like yeah. set you yeah. up for something else. Yeah. He's like, what do you, like, Mom doesn't look too good. What do you think? I don't know. Nothing it's can possible. be overlooked mm-hmm. in this show. Exactly. Nothing. Every Everything means thing something. Counts. Nothing. Oh, goodness. And it could easily be, speaking from like personal experience, it could easily be like she gets so stressed out from the surgery that it causes her a heart attack yeah. or oh, to something. get cancer. That happened yeah. with my grandma. Oh, yeah. No. Not to like bring that down, but I'm <laughs> right. just saying it's a realistic <laughs> thing. It's like we already had Christina and her cancer story. Yeah, I think yeah. moving on. Oh, goodness, I hope not. I hope yeah. not. But all right, so much to talk about. Where can everyone keep following me? You on social media. You can find me on all social media at Lexi Hamasfar. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at April Wisson Hand. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Kelly Kinez. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. You can follow all of us here at Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, all those fun places at AfterBuzz TV. Check out all of our fun after shows. And we will see you next week for Parenthood. Yay. See you next week. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.